I don't know if you're by. Can you hear me? Perfect. So my name is Florent Thierry, and uh, as you may see, I'm normally a member of the German CDA chapter. So I have to say a very big thank you to the organizers that I can be a part of your very nice conference here and uh, be a part of your community here. And I have to apologize for my bad English, but I try to do my best in the next minutes. Um, I'm working at the XZM just as a software engineer, so if you have in the end some questions about archaeological details or the method itself, I will be not able to answer them seriously, so I'm sorry about that. Um, but uh, what I'm talking about today, um, I will talk about something different about 3D, we'll talk about linked data and some kind of how to model time in linked data starting from some kind of correspondence analysis up to uh, a relative chronology according to Allen interval algebra. Um, but we will see how it works in the next months. So if we are looking for some, or in our archaeological databases, they usually include a lot of, we call it hidden assumptions in the end, and uh, just the, uh, in the data models. And especially some kind of shortcut relative chronological information, and some of the dependencies are not modeled in some transparent methods so that everybody knows what's going on. So the aim of our project is to make all of these hidden assumptions visible in the end and provide all the data as linked open data uh, in the end to establish some kind of reproducible research as a fundament for open science. Um, let's have a look at a small database, maybe you know that. The uh, Samian Research Database at the XM with a lot of uh, British uh, partners. Uh, it offers more than 250,000 identified potter stamps from all over Europe, and they are normally traditionally dated in a, some kind of short cut way. Um, how is it done? Normally in Roman archaeology, this is done by establishing some, in some kind of absolute dates, and from two tables, but you all know that in reality the situation is much more complex than this. So sometimes, or mainly, the datings are derived from Lemus parts. So, but there is only one absolute dated Lemus part, it's Hadrian's Wall, what is very good for a Simeon, which was found in Hadrian's Wall. But if you look at the German Lemus parts, If you look for uh, the German German use parts, for example, there we there they have the problem that there are uh, no absolute starting dates. So the question is in the end, how to date these Lemus faces? You can do that, for example, if you look at some Semian curves or coin curves. But in the end, the question is who is right? There are different um, solutions for dating. Um, we achieved that, or said that, uh, to achieve a chronology in uh, Samian dating, we use the so-called Horschel paradigma and correspondence analysis as a starting point for our software. And you can do the CA in any tool you like, like in R or whatever, or the ADP uh, from the XM, which is based on R, so nothing new for you, hopefully. And, um, we decided that the amount of some kind of time overlap between the Lemus parts can be defined by the number of potters they have in common, as you can see here on the slide. And if we've done some kind of CA and we have a deeper look into the relative chronological relationships, we can see the model to the right. The laser seems to be right if we look at the graphic. And in this case, the horizontal CA dimension access defines the amount of the overlap between the Lemus parts. But if we want to calculate or date the Lemus intervals using a CA, this causes some kind of challenges which have to be solved in the end. So, for example, some Lemus parts have some kind of uh, terminus postpone point, maybe derived from a historical source. Some of them have a terminus antiquant point derived from dental dates, for example. And some Lemus parts have no datings and are floating between all the other fixed parts. And to resolve them, you can use the um, alligator method and the alligator tool we developed at the AGZM in the scientific IT department. 
So, and the output of the alligator will be some kind of IRF representation of all the calculation, uh, and it's defined in an ontology, in, in an OWL file, in the so-called alligator ontology. So, how does it work? And the alligator method consists of a chain of steps to calculate the date in the floating Venus parts. So first, all the free, day, uh, free D distances between the ZA time periods are calculated. Second, the nearest free DCA neighbors for starting end years of the floating intervals towards intervals with the fixed values allocated. Third, the result of the, is stored in the so-called calculated virtual fuzzy year. And fourth, the intermediate result of the fixed and floating time intervals stored in the list of so-called virtual fuzzy start and end years. So let's come to a small example. Um, so for example, our aim is to date the mine lemurs and the Odenwald lemurs to get some kind of virtual fuzzy start and end years. After the alligator, we have some estimated dates uh, for the mine lemurs and the Odenwald lemurs. And after that, we have a list of so-called virtual fuzzy date start and end years. Um, what can we do with that? Just yeah, plot it on a some call. We will call it a virtual timeline because all the calculated years are not really years. So they are just calculated, just virtual. But there are some more steps in the alligator because the alligator method needs some more things to establish some kind of relative chronology based on Allen's interval algebra. So in step 5, the um, virtual fossil years are just transformed to a relative chronology uh, according to Allen's interval algebra. After that, we will create an RUF representation out of that to make uh, the things transparent, interoperable and semantically described and machine readable. In step 7, we can visualize the results. And in step 8, we will have a look on contradictions and start from the beginning in the end. Maybe you know the uh, Allen Interval Algebra, just a short introduction into that. So, um, for modeling a relative chronology based on Allen's Interval Algebra and apply a temporal reasoning, this model could be used. So, Allen invented or said that there are 13 different uh, time interval. Um, time intervals, how events can interact with each other, and all of this would be the basis for the next steps. So, um, our time intervals with the fixed um, virtual fuzzy datings are used to establish some kind of relative chronology according to Allen's algebra, as you can see just in this matrix here. And in the end, we will have some kind of REF graph representation to make it interoperable and uh, machine readable in the end. But <clears throat> on top of that, some kind of degree of connection between the Lemus parts could be described maybe with the Pearson correlation coefficient to make it a bit more complex in the end, but a bit more realistic. And if we want to do uh, some inferred conclusions, so reasoning in the end of these uh, elements of our algebra, um, including some kind of degree of connection, some kind of vagueness or uncertainty, uh, a tool could be used, the so-called academic meta tool, short AMT. This tool was uh, created by the Mindset, the i 3 Minds in IGZM uh, in Germany, and uh, I will just make a short introduction into that in the next few minutes. Um, especially if you want to do some temporal reasoning for getting conclusions, this could be done with a raw chain axiom within the academic meta tool. But what does it mean? So, for example, if we have an event that starts with an event B and event B meets with event C, we conclude the, that event A will be before event C with some kind of uncertainty or vagueness in the end. Um, the AMT is also described in our file and available on the net, so you can just uh, look it up if you want to. And um, for our Lemus part ontology, uh, we have to create our own ontology based on that ontology to uh, 
apply in the end um, temporal reasoning with some specific axioms. <coughs> and for this, we have some roles and concepts uh, for, for creating a relative time ontology based on the L interval algebra rules. So, and you, can, you can see just some kind of uh, uh, role J axioms, what happens and what will be the result of some kind of chain. And the uh, result of the academic meta tool will be also some kind of visualization in a web view. <coughs> so just have a look what will some kind of result in the end. So maybe you, we have Hadrian's wall and some kind of Pearson uh, coefficients um, with other Lemus parts. And uh, here you can see what reasoning will be in the end. So for example, um, we have Hadrian's wall, which is during the beta Olimus phase with some kind of degree of 76%, and the beta Olimus is after Elisabettenstraße with some kind of degree of 78%. So the conclusion will be that Hadrian's wall is after Elisabettenstraße with nearly 60%. Could be possible, it's not, nothing that is wrong. Um, maybe. We don't know. It's just a model and simulation. Um, so, and in the end, uh, the data and reasoning results just can be exported to some kind of linked open data in a quadruple, so uh, just a triple with some kind of vagueness in it. And come back from the technical stuff just to a bit of archaeology. Uh, the REF as an uh, archaeological result can be visualized in a chronological order of the Lemus construction phases. So, however, the hidden assumption could be the lower the Pearson value, the earlier or later the Lemus part is, does appear not to be valid in detail when it comes to a detailed chronology. The reasoning results suggest that several Lemus parts uh, indeed, to the high correlations with Hadrian's wall, constructed at a date close to the construction of Hadrian's wall. But Zemian is due to its relative small quantities found at Hadrian's wall and capable of displaying dating differences more precisely than 10 years. So that's all. I'm done. So if you have any questions, you can ask.